Hello and welcome to another episode of Cyril's Brettspiele. This time Table Talk Edition with... Kathleen Mercury again. And Niels. Yeah, today we are talking about Sechs Nimmt. That's a correct pronunciation, by the way, for Sechs Nimmt. Sure. Again from Mayfair Games. That sounds Games. great. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes well, it's an advantage to... Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ja! In der Kleine. Bitte! What a surprise! Nein. <laughs> okay, um, should I take the rules this time? Sure, go for it. Okay. So, at the beginning of the game, everybody gets 10 cards on his hand. These cards go from 1 to 104 in total in the game. Each player has 10 cards on his hand. Now, each player chooses one card secretly and put it face down in front of him. Then everybody is revealing his cards at the same time and the player with the lowest number go first and start bringing their bull card into the middle and adding that to this four cards. When someone picked a lower number than the lowest in the row here, he can exchange one of these four rows taking this as a penalty card in front of him and add his own card to the stack. After that, we are going in ascending order to add these cards to the number which is closest to that. So next number would be a 37, then a 38, then a 53, a 73, and oh, 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 a 78. Whenever it comes to a situation where here are five cards lying in the middle and you have to add the sixth card because the 78 is lower than the 83 but higher than the 73, then you have to take all these five cards as a penalty and replace it with your card. After everybody plays, played his card, you have now nine cards obviously in your hand and you restart the round. So you pick one card secretly and the game goes on for the next round. Obviously, in the last round, you have only the choice of two cards and then just one card. Whoever has the fewest amount of bulls in his penalty pile at the end of the game, this player has, for an example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bull symbols in his penalty pile, will win the game. Thanks for the rules, Nils. Thank you. Let's talk about the components, I would say, mm -hmm. and skip the rules. I mean, we did that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, in, in this game, you have only the cards from obviously 1 to uh, 104, nothing else, mm -hmm. the rules. You know, it's interesting because this is a... I think this game has been published at least, this is at least the second time that this game has been published. Oh, the first publishing is from 1994. Wow. So it's 21 years old. Yeah, there was the version that I first played, I think it was called Category 5, and it had a hurricane theme, which I really liked, actually. It was, just, it was kind of cool, the artwork was sort of spare. The artwork on this one is um, a little bit, little bit splashier. Um, and it's got this bull theme um, that you pick up bull heads, so it's but it's a little. Did, are you really tempt from this bulls? I mean, right? No, I, I say like I don't think it's the most. Um, it's functional. Yeah, it's functional. It's not the most appealing theme, but I guess there's not that many bull games out there, so there you go. And you can make up other words that uh, start with bull. I, I made a really interesting uh, review for a bull game. El Gaucho. Have you ever played mm -hmm. that? I've not. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, and um, Bull in a China Shop. All I remember from that game is just singing over and over, Cow Dollar, Cow Dollar. <laughs> so, my friend Carlos, hey Carlos, we still say Cow Dollar. Yeah, that, that so, sounds hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So you cannot say something about the quality. I mean, it's again a ten dollar. This game. one's green. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I know. Ooh. So uh, yeah. I mean, again, it's just a ten dollar game, so so that's fine. I think for 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 ten bucks, you get what you you pay for it. Right. From the mechanics, I have to admit, for for me, it's just personal preference. It's a little bit too chaotic. Mm. So you never can, especially with a large group of six plus mm -hmm. players, you cannot really count on it. If you have less players, it's too controllable. Mm -hmm. So. I'm always so what do you in think, between... So what do you think the sort of sweet spot, ideal number of players? 
Because uh, it, it can go to 10 players, which yeah, is but, nice if you want something fast with a lot of people. Yeah, but the sweet spot for me would be six. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I have to point out to one number, I would say six. Seven is definitely too much chaos for me. Uh, four I, I, is too controllable. Hmm. See, when we played with a large group of students, and I think we played with 10 at one point, yeah. um, it's they love the chaos so when it came to playing cards and kids immediately looking and recognizing that there was this going to be tidal wave of bullheads most likely coming their way i mean they thought that was fantastic because remember some of them like to play no thanks a very simple game with as much chaos as possible so that chaotic aspect because i mean for myself I mean, I love my, I love a good dry euro. I mean, I will, you know, <laughs> too much luck can make me fussy, and I just have to deal with it sometimes. Um, That's not dry. A euro is not dry. No, they're never dry. They're always warm and engaging. But sometimes, you know, it happens. And when I when a game like Robo Rally, I'm just like storming away from the table because that's just too much chaos for me. So the amount of chaos in this game, I think you're right, but. For a shorter game, this is okay because no one's going to lose too yeah, much sleep over this one. It's definitely okay, and there are not mm -hmm. so many games out that you can easily play with 10 players, right. which is not a social game. Right. right. Um, so, from that perspective, it's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I wanted to play a game with Chaos, I would pick yeah, Cold Express. Mm -hmm. uh, Walks the Plank, Robo Rally, things mm -hmm. like these programming games right. over that because then you have a little bit of more story. This is just cards. I, I mean, you have no theme in this game, zero theme. Mm -hmm. Done. So no. um, it's just a card game. Right. And for a card game, it's not too controllable for me. Oh, no, I agree. I agree. Um, and it's interesting, though, because the kids were kind of wondering about the logic of certain colors, and there are you know, for which cards have, for example, the 55 has seven bullheads, whereas um, other cards have less. So they thought that was sort of interesting that, that they were trying to find the internal logic into why certain cards yeah, but are you, worth you know more what, than others. You know what the logic is? I guess, I, I've never talked about mm. the designer with that, but all the double numbers, like 44, right. 33, have high bolts on it right. and all the, uh, with a zero in the, the end. Yeah, the even numbers have three and then um, 15 increments. Um, the those have two, and otherwise all the other numbers in between. Um, have... I think that's the logic behind that. Right, and so I mean, there's some, but as far as like why certain numbers were chosen to have two versus yeah. three, I don't, I didn't, I don't really see it. If there's a brilliant answer, I don't know it. But uh, uh, and to be honest, it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I mean, it's it's fun though because you know, especially when you do have those sorts of tidal waves building up, and then um, they they were trying to grab the cards for each other, and and especially when. Someone got a lot of bullheads. Um, I said, no, 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 don't touch the cards on other players' turns. What, what is wrong with me? <laughs> Give him the indignity of having to take all those into his hand. And once I phrase it like that, they're like, oh, have your bulls, man. So. Is, is it today, today a episode of Punishing Neils? Yes. <laughs> and you're smiling. Yes. This is not a cutthroat <laughs> game itself. <laughs> well, it's it can be, you know, especially if you do a good job. I mean, you, you can... Try to read other players a little bit, and then sometimes you're yeah, just completely wrong. Because there was one time when we played where you said, oh, the only good card out there is 102. And I said, I have it. And I did. And and then we, we played the cards, and I was like, oh, look, 102. And so that was kind of hilarious. And then earlier you said 21 was the card to have, and I had that one too, so that was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. I, but, I mean, that's always a sight. So... I, I have to admit, it, it's yeah. a good game, especially right. for, for groups like this. So right. it was, but you students. have to definitely want to have fun with it, or otherwise, you're right. Yeah. I think the chaotic aspect of it, you just feel like you're throwing cards and numbers around, and at some point, 10 rounds, you're done. Easy. And and again, for me, also the replayability. I mean, I, I'm always over when I'm played that three times in mm -hmm. a row. So I, I wouldn't say, okay, three times, 30 minutes, that's okay. But right. after that, I would, ah, let's go to, maybe after two times, oh, let's try something else. Right, I think so. So, and you pointed out the the first episode we made for No Thanks. I, mm -hmm. would, I would rather pick No Thanks before this one here. 
I think so. It plays a little bit faster. The rules are a little bit more streamlined. Um, and we had uh, students watching No Thanks, and they picked up on that one right away. This one wasn't quite as intuitive for people watching the game to without being instructed to pick up the game and play. So I think there's something to that sometimes. If it's, you know, understanding, it's not hard to understand. But no. To, but just from a distance, just watching from the sidelines, it made no sense to me. And, and I think for me, is particular for me, is I played in my... As I was really young, I played a lot of card games, mm -hmm. all these card games. Mm -hmm. So, but um, having a little bit of different games and just of only cards—that's always appealing to me. It's mm -hmm. over, oh yeah, over oh just yeah, yeah, cards. yeah. Especially when there are things like I said that you can yeah. pick up and take to a family event, or you know, teach to kids and play games with kids. It may give them a few choices to make. I'm always a fan of that. So then let's go over to the points, mm -hmm. to the recommendations. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, as far as, like, is this a game that I would definitely want to buy for my students? I would if I could get the um, the hurricane-themed version, just because <laughs> I, I, like, I like the art, you know, and especially since it goes after five cards, you know. Are you, you sure then... it was the same game? I have no idea. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but, but, and what I liked about that one, especially Category 5 Hurricane is the worst, so that's a good sort of reminder in the game that after five you take all the cards, whereas with this one, um, obviously they made it in the title, Zex Nimt. Yeah, Zex yeah. Nimt. Yeah, sehr gut. Wirklich gut? No, oh, sehr super. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's switch over to English. <laughs> that would be the limit of the Deutsch. Um, so, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've been to Germany twice. <laughs> oh, okay. um, so, anyway, I'm the one with tears streaming down my face. Where's the bathroom? No, I'm kidding. Um, so, <laughs> anyway, as far as the game, like, get it. Like, honestly, I've played a lot of worse card games, and I don't mean to sound like a negative sort of turning into a positive thing, but, you know, there are definitely some things that are fun about this game. I would say you can always easily have it. It's in the closet. Are there some games that you might pick more than this one? Mm, possibly. Yeah, um, for me it's for me it's mediocre. It's okay. It's not a great game, with one exception. If I really need a game for ten players, this would be always one of the first picks because I, I honestly I don't have enough games for ten except for the social games right. like code names and right. all of them. Right. Uh, but this is a little bit different. All of right. the others are just and you know. Over here in the U.S., I, sometimes I have a little bit of a problem of a language barrier. Sounds weird, but yes, uh, it, when it gets to dis deeply describe some special things and mm -hmm. double meaning of words or even slang meaning. Or using profanity in front of my students. It's fine. So, yeah. <laughs> so, in, in this case... They thought it was great. <laughs> In this case, I would pick that if I'm looking for a game with right. a lot of players. Yeah, for a lot of players, fast. Yeah. Fun. And if you wanted to take to, uh, it with you to a bar or things like that, or mm. eating out, things like that. Mm. I think no thanks would be better for that. Yeah, 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 I agree. But it's not bad. It's good. Okay, thanks for watching. Okay. See you next time when it is Civil Spreadspiele with Kathleen. You were always like, hey, yeah. smiling. And Niels, see you next <laughs> bye. time. Bye bye.